The Casio G-Shock GBD H2000. They really need to start working on their names. What's up, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dave from Chase the Summit, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the brand new Casio G-Shock GBD H2000, and that is a very long name. I'm gonna say it a lot in this video, so buckle up. This video is not going to be a long-term in-depth review about this watch because I've only had it for a few days. But I did wanna make this video after using this watch for a few days for a couple of long runs, along with wearing it throughout my day, just doing my general wellness stuff and sleep tracking and things like that, because I have learned a lot about this watch and I wanna share with you what I've learned so far. If you're familiar with the Casio G-Shock line of watches, you already know what this thing's kind of all about. It's a very ruggedly built watch. It's for a very specific type of person who likes this kind of style. And it's not for everybody out there, I get that. But it is pretty interesting. It's definitely got a look to it. It's definitely different. And I have reviewed other G-Shocks on this channel before, including the older GBD H1000, which was the predecessor to this watch, along with the GSW H1000, which is a more of a smartwatch with Google Wear OS on board. So in this video today, I wanna go through some of the new features and specs of the GBD H2000, how it compares to the older GBD H1000, where things got better and where things kind of remain the same. But before we get to all that good stuff, the first things first, I wanna talk about options and pricing. This watch comes in at $399 here in the USA, and at that price point, you've got a lot of competition. Everything from Garmin, Koros, and a whole bunch of other brands are competing in that $400 price bracket. And at the end of this video, I'll share my thoughts on where this watch compares to these other watches. Along with that price tag, you do have a few options in terms of the colors of the watch. You can get this really cool neon yellow green color with pink accents. There's also a black and gray version that's a little bit more subtle, and there's a black and red version as well. Now let's talk about the setup and app experience when you take this thing out of the box. In the past with the GBD H1000 and the GSW H1000, they both used an app called Casio Move. Now on the GBD H2000, that has changed, and now this watch pairs to an app called Casio Watch. I don't know why they did that. It's a little bit of a segmented thing, but now you get to download a different app for this particular watch. The Casio Watch app is pretty good. It seems well developed. There's no glitches or hangups or anything like that. And the process of pairing the watch to the app was pretty straightforward. Now within the Casio Watch app, you can do all kinds of things. You can customize various aspects of the watch from the watch face and can configure the data fields that you see on the watch face along to the widgets that you can scroll through. And I'll show you that in a little bit. The Casio Watch app is where you can do things like your firmware updates and you can also view all of your daily wellness and sleep tracking information along with all of your activities like runs and rides in an area called LifeLog. And we'll talk more about the app as we go through this video. With that out of the way, let's move into the size and weight of the GBD H2000. As you can see here, this is a big chunk and watch. That's the best term I could come up with to describe this. The GBD H2000 comes in at 60 millimeters long, 53 millimeters wide, and it's about 20 millimeters thick. Despite that fairly large footprint for the watch, it comes in at a fairly light weight at just 63 grams, which really isn't bad for a watch of this size. And because of that, it's actually surprisingly comfortable on the wrist. And as you can see, I've got 165 millimeter circumference wrists, and this watch definitely makes a statement on my wrist because they're not very big, but if you did have bigger wrists, it probably wouldn't look so bold. In terms of comfort though, the GBD H2000 is surprisingly comfortable because the footprint's so big and it's got such a light weight, it just kind of settles in on your wrist, and really, I don't mind wearing this watch even though it's really big. And if you were curious how it stacks up against the competition in terms of size, all the way on the left here, we do have the GBD H2000. Next to that, we have the Apple Watch Ultra. Then we've got the Coros Apex 2 Pro. Then we've got the Garmin Tactic 7. And all the way on the right here, we have the itty bitty, looking pretty small in this lineup, Suunto 9 Peak Pro. Quick interruption, if you're finding this video fun or entertaining or anything, please consider going down and giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel down below because that really helps me out. Also, if you're planning on picking up the GBD H2000 or any other watch I show in this video, I'll have everything linked in the description down below. And those links do help support this channel, but they cost nothing extra to you. So you might as well use them. Okay, 
Back to the video. With the size and weight out of the way, let's get a closer look at the hardware and what it's all about. So this watch is made out of multiple materials. Inside here, the bezel is actually metal. I can feel it with my nail and it does feel like metal, although I don't know what kind of metal it is. I'm assuming it's either titanium or aluminum. On top of that are these sort of pads or cushions made out of plastic. And this isn't just any plastic, it's actually made out of a biomass recycled plastic. Of course, this is a G-Shock watch and that means it's pretty much built like a tank. You're gonna be able to whack these things off of off rocks while you're rock climbing. So overall, I wouldn't worry about damaging this watch. It's pretty much gonna withstand anything you throw at it. The GBDH2000 is also 200 meter water resistant, which is pretty much double that of most of the competition. Flipping the watch over, you can see there is an optical heart rate sensor on the back of this watch and that does include an SpO2 or a blood oxygen saturation sensor and this is a new sensor for this watch that's been updated since the previous model. And of course we'll talk about heart rate accuracy coming from the sensor later in this video. Below the heart rate sensor you will see a couple of electrical contacts and that is for the included proprietary charging cable that just kind of clips on and there's a unique feature on this where they actually have a little scoop cutout so you can see the display while it's being charged. The included band on the watch isn't a typical silicone style band. It is made out of rubber, but there is also some bits of resin in here, which are actually hard chunks of plastic or plasticky rubber kind of feeling. And that's those pink highlighted areas there. And the interesting thing about the band is that yes, it, it does have a little bit of stretch to it, but it's also pre-contoured to your wrist. And that's just to wrap around your wrist a little bit more comfortably than if it didn't have that feature. The included band on the GBD H2000 is replaceable. However, it's not easy to replace. There's no quick release pins in the back, you will need to remove the little screws here, which are Allen head cap screws in order to replace the band. Now let's talk about the user interface and the buttons on this watch. On the left, you have an up button and a down button along with a enter or select button in the middle here. And on the right, you do have a light button that'll turn on your backlight. And down here, you do have a dedicated back button. Now for obvious reasons, there is no touch screen on this watch. And we'll talk about the display on this watch in a little bit, but yeah, no touch activity here. You will need to use the buttons for everything. The buttons themselves do feel pretty high quality and like they will last a while. However, there's no click. They're kind of an endless push, kind of a mushy feeling push when you push on the buttons. There's no haptic feedback, like you actually click something, which I do miss compared to my other watches. Now let's talk about the display on this watch. As you can see, it is a monochrome display and it is pretty low resolution and that's for the sake of saving all the battery life they can with this watch. On top of the display is a mineral glass. They didn't claim what kind of glass it is. It's not Gorilla Glass, it's not Sapphire. It's a mineral glass, so it is going to be scratch resistant, but I wouldn't say it's scratch proof. And that's why they put this big chunky bezel that raises up above it, where if you bump something on this watch, it'll hit the bezel before it hits that display. And because energy efficiency is a priority on this watch, this display is solar enabled. The entire display surface is a solar panel that will charge up your watch when you're out in the sunlight. And we'll talk about how effective that is in the battery section of this video, because it is pretty impressive in some situations. Now let's walk through the user interface on the GBD H2000, because it has changed compared to the older GBD H1000. As you can see, this is my watch face. I've got my date, I've got the day of the week, the time, the seconds, and of course my battery level here in the corner. And up at the top, there are some tiny icons, which you can probably barely see. And one is for notifications to let me know if I have any phone notifications. And the other is for Bluetooth connectivity to my phone. This watch face is customizable from within the Casio watch app. You can change around what data fields you wanna see here and you can change through different pre-configured themes or make your own custom theme. From the watch face, if I scroll up or down using the buttons on the left, I'll start to cycle through the various widgets. And as you can see, I've got a heart rate widget, blood oxygen, breathing exercise, cardio status, life log, nightly recharge, activity log, almanac, compass, altimeter, barometer, world time, timer, stopwatch, and notifications. And of course, if I dive into the notifications widget, it'll display all of the notifications from my phone. You can see my fitness pal there, Gmail, and my ring doorbell. Now, if I click the enter button on the left here, I will enter my workout selection. And as you can see, there are much more workouts on the GBD H2000 as compared to the GBD H1000. This watch has running, biking, gym workout, interval timer, pool swimming, open water swimming, trail running, and walking. Even though there are more activity profiles on this watch compared to the older model, there's still missing 
missing a few that I find kind of interesting. Like they have trail running, but they don't have hiking. And I feel like someone buying this kind of watch is probably more interested in hiking, mountaineering maybe, or climbing than trail running. But you're limited to the, this selection of activities. You can't add custom activities here. Diving into a run activity, as you can see here, you can see some of the information that's displayed on the watch. I've got my distance, my split time, and my pace. If I scroll down, I have my lap information. If I scroll down again, I do get a heart rate zone gauge to show me what heart rate zone I'm in during my activity, which is kind of nice. Scrolling down again, I get the time of day and my split time. And then scrolling down again, I go back to the first page and all of these pages are fully customizable from within the Casio Watch app, which is really nice. I can move around any data fields that I want. I can add and remove information as I please. Now, when it comes to wellness and activity tracking, the Casio Watch app collects all of your daily wellness information. This will include information like your steps, your calories burned, your heart rate information throughout the day, and your training load status, which is actually powered by Polar. Yes, the Polar watch manufacturer shared their technology with Casio to make this watch a reality. The life log will also display your sleep analytics. And now with the Casio G-Shock GBD H2000, this is powered by Polar in their nightly recharge. Nightly recharge is a feature that came out on Polar watches a couple of years ago. And it tries to give you an idea on how your body recharged from your previous day while you slept overnight and gives you a score the following day, which is really cool. Unfortunately, I haven't been using the watch long enough for it to give me a score yet, but I will report back in my long-term review down the road. Now when it comes to viewing your activity data from runs and rides, again, that is buried in your life log. And you can see things like your distance, the duration of your activity, the calories burned during that activity, your pace information, your cadence, your elevation data, if you're running up or down hills, your heart rate data, and of course your heart rate zones, along with all of that information, we get another polar powered feature and that is running index. Running index is basically an estimation of VO2 max on one particular activity. And you will get this during running and trail running activities on the GBD H2000 as well, just like you would on a Polar watch like the Polar Vantage V2. Another Polar feature that you'll see within your activities is energy used. This will actually break down what carbs, protein, and fat you burned during your activity and display that on a graph. I don't know how they make those estimations, but it is pretty interesting to look at after your activity. Now that we've talked about some of the activity tracking features, I wanna talk about external sensors for a second because that's kind of a problem with the GBD H2000. You cannot pair an external sensor to this watch. There's no Bluetooth support. There's no Ant Plus support. You can't take something like a Garmin HRM Pro sensor and pair it to this watch for more accurate heart rate data. You have to rely on the sensors on the watch because there's no external sensor support here. And along with external sensor support, let's talk about navigation and mapping because again, there is no mapping or navigation on this watch. You cannot import a GPX file to follow in real time when you're out on your run with breadcrumb mapping. However, there is a compass, there's an altimeter, and there is a barometer if you wanna use this watch in conjunction with a paper map for navigation. And again, I feel like this is a missed opportunity for the GBD H2000 because for a watch in this price point in this kind of design for rugged outdoorsy type of people, they're gonna want a watch with some sort of mapping or navigation features, at least from a basic level with breadcrumb navigation. We're not getting that here with the GBD H2000, which I thought was kind of a bummer. And since we're talking about things this watch is lacking, I've got one more for you, and that is third-party sync support. There's no third-party syncing going on here with the GBD H2000. There's no way to link Strava or Nike Run Club or Runtastic or any of those other platforms out there to this watch. I couldn't find any settings in the Casio Watch app on my phone in order to connect other accounts. And I think the lack of third-party support is a major oversight for another reason, because you can't export activities out of the Casio Watch app. So you can't export a GPX file or a Fit file to take your data out of the Casio app and put it somewhere else. You're sort of trapped in the ecosystem. If you use your GBD H2000 for a couple of years and then decide you want to get an Apple Watch or something like that, you can't take any of that data with you to sync it to a third party service. It's all trapped within the Casio ecosystem. And with that, let's move into GPS modes and accuracy. So of course the GBD H2000 is GPS enabled, which will allow you to track runs and bike rides and trail runs and hiking and everything like that. Now the spec sheet and the paperwork and everything isn't clear on what satellite systems they're using 
on the GBD H2000. I'm not sure if it's multi-band or single band. However, I did notice one thing immediately when I started up this watch and that it takes a while for the GBD H2000 to acquire a GPS fix before starting your activity. You'll be prompted with a display that says starting GPS and then it goes to now receiving for around one to two minutes prior to starting your run or ride, which I did find a little bit frustrating. Even after several runs in the same area, I kept getting this mess message. It seems like it takes a while for this watch to get a fix. And when it comes to GPS accuracy from the GBD H2000, again, this was pretty challenging for me to compare because given that I can't export the files out of this watch to analyze in my special software, we'll just have to look at the data from within the app and compare it to some of my other test devices for a baseline of comparison. So going through the GPS data within the Casio watch app, I did zoom in on an out and back activity where if the GPS accuracy was perfect, you would see a single line. And if it was a little bit off, you would see double lines. And as you can see, the GPS track coming from the GBD H2000 actually doesn't look bad within this app. You can see that the lines are pretty close to each other. And this is pretty similar to a lot of the competition at this price point. However, in some areas, there was significant GPS drift that was kind of unexplained. But again, I didn't really get to analyze this at a deeper level with my software because I couldn't export the file from the watch. Now let's take a look at one particular activity I did with the GBD H2000 while also wearing the Apple Watch Ultra and a Garmin for a baseline of comparison because these two watches are multi-band enabled, which kind of puts them as the gold standard in terms of accuracy. So on the Garmin Phoenix 7X with multi-band turned on for the best accuracy, I recorded 7.16 miles and I recorded that at a 1316 average pace. The Apple Watch Ultra recorded 7.1 miles at a 1325 average pace and the GBD H2000 recorded 7.2 miles at 1306 average pace. So while the GPS track within the Casio watch app may not appear to be perfect, the overall distance and pace actually lined up pretty favorably compared to my other test devices. And with that said, let's move into heart rate accuracy because I ran into the same issues here without the ability to export the files. We're just going by the numbers that I can see in the app. Now within the Casio watch app, you can actually view a heart rate graph from your activities. However, the heart rate graph is very busy. There's a lot of information on it and it's kind of hard to digest what's going on there. So for the sake of this video, instead of showing you a detailed heart rate graph, because I can't, let's just talk about the maximum heart rate recorded in the average heart rate recorded because I feel like that's the best way to compare these devices. So on this particular run in this sample, I was wearing the Garmin Phoenix 7X and it was paired to the Garmin HRM Pro chest strap that I was wearing on my chest because this is an ECG sensor and it gives you a really accurate result and it's a good baseline of comparison. And on this particular run, I was also wearing the Amazfit GTR4 and used its optical heart rate sensor on my other wrist just to have more sample in this comparison. So first up, let's talk about the Garmin Phoenix 7X paired to that heart rate sensor on my chest. The Garmin recorded a maximum heart rate of 154 and an average of 124. Now the Amazfit GTR4 recorded a maximum heart rate of 161 and an average of 122. And finally, the G-Shock GBD H2000 recorded a whopping maximum heart rate of 187 and an average of 144. So as you can see, the Garmin HRM Pro chest strap and the Amazfit optical sensor actually line up pretty favorably. They're pretty close. While the G-Shock GBD H2000 seems very high. And I can say for certain, my effort level was not high enough to hit 187 beats for, per minute because that would be like an all out sprint for me. And this was a pretty chill run. I was running a pretty, pretty calm pace. So I don't know what's going on here. And again, I can't export the data to compare and get into the weeds and compare them in a graph style. So I'm just gonna have to go by these numbers and say that the heart rate sensor on the GBD H2000 doesn't seem perfect. And that might be due to that really stiff band because with the band being so stiff, it's hard to get a really good fit with this watch on your wrist, prevent it from bouncing around since it is a larger device. Moving right along, let's dive into battery life because that is a strength of the GBD H2000. If you use this watch in watch mode with the all day heart rate sensor turned off, you can get about two months of use with this watch, which is pretty impressive, about 60 days. However, if you do wanna get the most juice out of this watch, you can turn on power saver mode, which will turn off some of the sensors of the watch in order to get the most battery life. And in that mode, wait for it, 
you get 23 months of use with the GBD H2000. Almost two years on a single charge. Now that two years of use on a single charge will come at a sacrifice. You wouldn't be recording GPS activities in that mode, obviously, and you're not gonna get full functionality of the watch, but still, if you wanna tell the time of day and the date and what day it is, you can do that in power saver mode and get a ton of battery life. Now let's talk about GPS on battery life when you're out on a run or a ride or a really long run. And in my case, I do run ultra marathons, so this is an area I really care about. There are a few settings in GPS mode, there's high rate, normal and long, and depending on your settings, this will reduce or increase your accuracy. In the highest accuracy mode, you will get about 14 hours of use with the GBD H2000 out on a run. In normal mode, you'll get 16 hours of use, and in long mode, or longest power saver mode, you'll get 19 hours of use maximum, which for me at this price point is kind of a bummer. I feel like I would expect more from a watch with these kinds of battery claims with two years of standby mode, I would be hoping for more like 40 hours of GPS on battery life, more comparable to something like a Garmin or a Chorus watch, because these watches are all in the same price category. With all that said, we have reached that point in the video where I want to talk about final thoughts and conclusions in my initial review of the GBD H2000. Let's put it out there. This watch is not especially cheap at $400 here in the USA. At that price point, it is competing head to head with a really, a, a lot of competition. The Coros Apex 2, the Garmin Forner 265, they're all at that price point and they offer a ton of features for that amount of money. Not only that, but the GBD H2000 is lacking in some key sports features like external sensor support, the ability to sync to third party services like Strava, a limited selection of activities, and somewhat limited battery life at only 19 hours in that reduced accuracy mode. With that said, who is this watch for? I'm gonna state the obvious here, this watch is for G-Shock fans. And I think if you're watching this video, you probably know who you are. You're probably mad that I talked bad about this watch. I'm just telling you how I see it as somebody who's a runner and primarily really interested in the features that can help me get better at running. And for me, at $400, this watch is a lot. But if you are a G-Shock fan, you love the way this watch looks, you're a casual athlete, somebody who runs and rides a couple of times a week, and you're not looking for crazy long battery life or to export your activities to third-party services or to pair up external sensors, this might be the watch for you. In fact, at that $400 price point, you're probably interested more of the looks and feel of this watch being a G-Shock than its capabilities. And for you, this watch might be the perfect fit. But I think for me and a lot of other folks out there that are primarily interested in these sports features, there's a lot more better options at this $400 price tag, like the Coros Apex 2, the Garmin Instinct 2, the Instinct Crossover, or even the new Garmin Foreigner 265. But for those diehard G-Shock fans out there, this watch certainly has a unique look. It also has a unique user experience and crazy long battery life when you're not in a GPS activity at almost two years. That's kind of a joke. Now that I've said all of that, I wanna hear from you. Are you interested in the GBD H2000? Am I being too hard on this watch? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you and your take on this watch at 400 bucks. And we did it, we made it to the end of this video. This was my initial review of the GBD H2000 and it's just that, an initial review after using it for a few days. And if you wanna see my long-term review, make sure to go down and hit subscribe down below so you don't miss more videos coming down the road because I will definitely have follow-up content about this watch. And while you're down there, consider hitting the thumbs up and subscribe and do the comments and all the things that YouTube algorithms like, I would really appreciate it. And finally, if you are planning on picking up the GBD H2000, a Coros, an Apple Watch, or any other watch I showed in this video, check out the links in the description down below because they do help support this channel and they cost nothing extra to you. So you might as well use them. And with that, friends, I'm done here. I'll see you next time. Bye.